come and worship the God who said, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Welcome to our worship on Mothering Sunday. Loving God, thank you for mums and children and for all the joy of family life. Be with those who are grieving because they have no mother. Be close to those who are struggling because they have no children. Be near to those who are sad because they are far apart from those they love. Let your love be present in every home and help your church to have eyes to see and ears to hear the needs of all who come. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception. We fail to live as your children. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of compassion, whose Son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth 
and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Exodus chapter 2. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Luke chapter 2. 
Charles' father and mother were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 19. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mothering Sunday in England took place on Mid Lent or Refreshment Sunday when young people employed as domestic servants or apprentices were allowed to go home to their mothers. They often gathered flowers on their way home and would give their mum a posy on their arrival. Today is a chance for us to remember and to show how much we care for our mothers and how precious they are to us. Of course, we also have to acknowledge that motherhood can prove to be difficult and complicated for some. Remembering that some whose mothers have died, those unable to have children and those who relate, whose relationship with their mother may have broken down. Today, though, is a chance for each of us, whatever situation we find ourselves in, to use this day for all of us to acknowledge those who loved us from our birth. It might be a father, an aunt, a grandparent or a godparent. Giving thanks and remember all that they did for us in their mothering. This year will prove to be unique for most of us. For this is often the time when we gather as a family group, sharing time, maybe a meal or a visit out. Covid has put a stop to this, to most gatherings. And how do we choose which of our children to be with? But technology, including the telephone, will mean that most of us can be contacted in one way or another. Praise God. In today's reading, we see the length and the breadth of a mother's love for her child. They show a mother's reaction to their son's plight. And although these stories of mothers in scripture are in, in a sense incidental, told for the sake of their sons, who each had a major part in the drama of God's salvation. But in each case, we see their mother's role is critical for the fulfilment of God's plan. As we look at the story from Exodus, it may seem that God's great rescue plan for his people has a very fragile beginning. It hinges on a mother's love for her child. At the heart of this story are three women. The Hebrew mother who risked her own life to defy Pharaoh. She needed courage and resourcefulness to protect her boy child and skill and care in preparing that basket, the thing that stood between him and death. She was totally committed to his safety and his life, unselfishly giving up her own claim on him to ensure his future. Then there's his sister Miriam. The baby just wasn't abandoned to his fate, for she keeps a careful watch on him 
and we see how skillfully she adapts as the situation develops, even to the extent of negotiating for her brother's own uh, mother to be his wet nurse. We then see the Egyptian princess, who is also prepared to take great risks. She knew that he was a Hebrew boy. We see that she shows compassion and thinks about all the practicalities. She also shows a long-term commitment in taking him as her, her own child. Moses was rescued and so went on to rescue God's people, the Israelites. I ask that we have both gospel readings this morning because, as we heard, they encompass the beginning and the end of Jesus's life. Mary was present in the temple and by her son's side at the cross. Mary and Joseph take the 40 day old Jesus to the temple where they are greeted by Simeon, who gives a blessing and amazing words of prophecy. As we heard, this helpless infant would bring in God's salvation, opening the eyes of all, all the people to the truth of God, leading Israel to fulfil God's given destiny. As Simeon continues, he recalls that because of Jesus, there would be revolution and division in Israel. That Jesus was a sign from God, but even so, he would be opposed and rejected. It says some would fall because of him. And in Isaiah chapter 8, it says, He will become a sanctuary, a stone one strikes against. For both houses of Israel, he will become a rock what one stumbles over, a trap and a snare for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. It also says, whilst others would rise. And in Malachi chapter 4, it says, but for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Hearing those words from Simeon was amazing, but unknown to Mary, it was the beginning of the road to the cross. The burden that came with the privilege of being the mother of God's son. Mary watched Jesus grow up and leave his family home. She'd seen him with his disciples, the fishermen and the tax collectors. As she saw him come into conflict with the Pharisees and the temple authorities, did she remember Simeon's words? As his mother, Mary would have grieved by the widespread rejection that he faced. Wouldn't we feel the same for our own? As he hung on the cross, did she remember Simeon's words, telling her that a sword would pierce her own soul? Seeing her child die in agony, a criminal's death on a cross, must have been unimaginably awful for Mary. Yet even as he's close to death, Jesus sees his mother Mary standing next to the disciple he loves and he has great concern and compassion for them both. We hear those beautiful words, woman here is your son and to the disciple he says here is your mother. In the depth of pain and rejection his love and compassion overflow in care for both of them. Knowing now that his mother will be cared for and comforted after his death. As we experience uh, Mothering Sunday, may we think of all mothers praying that God will bring back those who are estranged back together again, healing their brokenness. Praying also that God will bring peace and comfort to those who have lost their mothers through death or illness and giving thanks for all who have loved 
and nurtured us as we grew up. Amen. So let's just finish with a prayer. Gracious God, on this special day of thanksgiving, we catch a glimpse through a mother's love for her child of your love for us. The care and dedication and devotion you show to all your children, which makes you as much our mother as our father. For the intensity of your love, Lord, we praise you. Amen. Let us come to the Lord in hope and faith, trusting that as a mother loves and comforts her child, so the Lord loves and will comfort us. We give thanks today for biblical women. We thank you for Eve, our first mother. We thank you that she had the courage to be curious, to lose her innocence and become the first to understand the complexities of life. We thank you for Sarah, Hannah and Elizabeth, for their stories of patience and endurance through long years of waiting and not knowing. May all who long for parenthood be strengthened and comforted in times of pain and heartache. We thank you for Hagar, for her resolve and perseverance in exile. May all parents who are forced to flee in circumstances of war, famine or domestic violence be given hope. We especially remember those presently caught up in terror and violence in North East Mozambique. Lord, we thank you for Rachel, who carried the burden of grief and wept for her children. Hold the hands of all parents who weep, for those whose children have died, or gone missing, or are lost to them in other ways. This week we especially pray for the family of Sarah Everard. We thank you for Mary, the new Eve, whose yes to God changed our world forever. We reflect on her faithful love and her tender care of Jesus. May we never forget that in her giving is our greatest receiving of the gift of life wrapped in a manger and in a tomb. May we hold our faith in Christ deep within our hearts, as Mary once held him deep within her womb. We pray for those for whom Mothering Sunday is a joyful day. Bless children and parents as they celebrate. May there be fun and laughter. May the relationships which grow be forever cherished. We pray too for those for whom Mothering Sunday is a difficult day. For those who have never known their mother or whose mother has died. For those who struggle with the way their children have chosen to live their lives for those who have a difficult relationship with their mother. May they have the comfort of knowing that your love for them is constant, your understanding perfect, your compassion never ending. We pray for our church family today, especially those who feel isolated or upset. Be with those who are ill, those who are anxious, and those who grieve.
Now let's hold a moment of quiet to bring before God those we want or need to remember today. We place them into God's hands, knowing his love and care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless us. May God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless us. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless us. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 